almost 33 hours it can stay in the air and it can reach the far reaches of the ocean and uh, areas that you want to keep under constant surveillance which is not really possible by satellite or by just sending a PHI there. has been operating these uh, these uh, drones uh, they fall in the category of the hail that is uh, high altitude long endurance uh, uh, drones so uh, we realize there is a need for having these drones for you know better surveillance and increased uh, maritime domain awareness uh, so we had taken uh, two of these on lease uh, from uh, November 2020 onwards and since then we have been operating it. Kareeb 12,000 hours of operation have been uh, undertaken. So, this is our experience ho gaya and we have understood the benefits and advantages of it. It can, it has got uh, the ability to keep large, you know, areas under surveillance. So, I will just show you on the, on the map if you can just come over. So, if you just look at this map here, you know, uh, this is India and uh, the Indian Ocean region. So, uh, the, it's a very large area, you know, you have to keep almost, uh, to go as far as 2,500, 3,000 miles, you know, to keep that area under surveillance for various requirements. That is, you know, we, we need to know uh, who's operating in these waters, kya kar rahe, kis liya hai hai, and, you know, what is the, uh, you know, what is their aim. So, in, in, uh, in peacetime, we do, uh, you know, uh, ISR, that is Intelligence, Surveillance and Recognition. And uh, when, you know, when there is a crisis or, you know, there is likely to be combat, etc., then uh, there is a possibility of using it for, you know, uh, uh, detecting, tracking and then uh, uh, track, uh, and targeting also. So, uh, this, uh, I mean, this uh, unmanned uh, system, it has got long endurance, uh, almost 33 hours it can stay in the air and it can reach the far reaches of the ocean and uh, areas that you want to keep under constant surveillance, which is not really possible by satellite or by just sending a PHI there. Uh, this, uh, you know, these uh, drones are able to stay there for a longer duration and keep it under surveillance and if somebody is transiting in these waters, we can continuously keep it under uh, watch. So, that is a big advantage and uh, we have now learnt, uh, you know, quite a bit about its capability. We are satisfied with it and that is why we have, you know, we are very keen that this, uh, these are uh, procured. How does it help uh, in indigenous ocean also, if you ask me? Uh, right now, we don't have the technology for these uh, hail uh, uh, UAVs. They are, they are the, uh, the high-end category because of their endurance and altitude. They can fly at, you know, above 40,000 feet and so on. So, uh, by inducting these, I think the initial 10 will, will come in, uh, you, know, you know, built in the U.S. and come here. The rest will be here. Uh, so, that will uh, give us advantage of, you know, various technologies that can be, uh, you know, that will be transferred. Uh, technology in terms of, you know, the radar processing, the uh, sensor fusion, then uh, some of the composites that are, you know, uh, part of the aircraft, then uh, titanium alloy, uh, you know, uh, castings for the undercarriage and, and so many other, you know, uh, the payloads, uh, integration of the weapons when indigenous weapons are made, you know, how do we integrate them into this? So, many of these uh, technologies are getting transferred and uh, uh, since the, uh, since 21 aircraft are going to be, you know, assembled here, uh, there will be a requirement for, you know, uh, smaller companies, MSMEs and uh, startups, etc. to participate in it and, you know, provide this. So, it will provide an opportunity for the uh, aerospace, uh, you know, uh, industries.